How's it going you guys? Today I'm going to teach you guys how to fish for the uh, Southern California Saltwater Striper. I know, crazy. Um, I'm going to teach you how to fish for a from boat. As you see we're on the boat right now cruising. But basically what we're doing is fishing live bait. We'll be fly lining sardines, using mackerel also, and using jigs. I'm going to show you guys what you need to look for on the fish finder, what you guys need to look for, surface of the water, bait you want to be seeing, and also how to work your artificial baits. And I'll show you glide baits and uh, much more. All right guys, here's our setup for today. Got our fly line Dean with a size two J hook. And then that's what I'm using for the stripes. Cause sometimes there are some bigger ones that will uh, cruise back. So cast that out and see what happens. We got our first fish on it. This is not a striper. Most likely a little halibut. See right there, it's holding on. Oh, got him, got him. Oh, yeah, I got a halibut. Yeah. Yep. Good one? Oh, he pulled some drag. Can't see. Feels, oh yeah, decent one. Uh, I mean, he's on the border of legal for sure. I'll see, I, I think I can bounce him. Here we go, boys. First fish of the day. Here we go, boys. A little bit. Have a bit. Oh, 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 oh. First fish of the day is a halibut. Here we go. A little halibut. Probably about 20 inches. We're going to let him go regardless, but nice fish. Set him down on the there he goes. This happened when top water blow up on my fly line and missed it like five times. You got a striper? I wrapped in your line. Your line's right here. Bit on a stripe. Yep, there he is. Let's grab him. He's slippable. Oh, he died. Oh, there he goes. Well, oh, there was our first striper. Jim's on fire! Oh! <laughs> Jim is on fire right now, boys. just came off. Yep. Oh. Recording! Guys, I was winding up and I almost got annihilated. Oh my god. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> oh. oh! I don't get how they're coming off. It's all it's spotty. Wrong kind. Okay. Yeah, that's right. One. Do you like start something like that? Here we go, boys. We got one right now. You got a net? You want a net? I think so. It's gonna be our best shot at landing them. Here we go, boys. Here we go, boys. Southern California Striper back again. Couple missed bites and uh, here we go, boys. SoCal Striper, just like that. All right, boys, let's get a clean release on this butte. Just saw one flash on it, eat it. Yep, stung him. There we go, boys. Another striper. Mm -hmm. oh, no, don't turn. Come on. <laughs> oh. Get him? Yeah, I got him. Striper number. Three of them. Look at that fish, boys. Look at that fish. Another beautiful SoCal striper flying the sardine. Show you guys some more info in a sec. Look at that. There you go. Come on, buddy. All right, guys. So, right here we have the Depths Sakamata Shad. Um, this is one of my go to baits for the striper. It's got a tight kick. Anyway, the striper are on like sardines or eating stuff like that. And I saw one time that. Um, 
I was wanting my sardine in really fast, and this bait has a tight kick of like a sardine being wound in really fast or sardines swimming really fast. So this is what I believe will be the go-to striper bait. Better than the SP minnow, better than all. Super soft, tight kick, as you'll see. Basically guys, when you're working it, you want your rod tip as close to the water as possible, and you want to be going at a fast speed because that gives the bait the best action. You guys can see right here, crazy action. Yeah, Alright boys, we're bit. Oh, oh, he's got it, he's got it. Got away, got away. Boys, we're gonna see if I get smashed. And the answer is going to be yes. He's got it, so we're gonna give him an extra second with the striper, because every time I keep giving him freaking a, a pounce, of spit, let go, spit, let go, like this one has spit, let go. Here we go, get back to him. Oh my God. I have the boat. You got it, don't you? Get him? I don't know. No. It's a big fish. What is this? It's a Halley. Oh. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> nice halibut. There we go, boys. And same size as a lot. Another 20 inch here. Whoa. You hear him slap the boat? On the board. SoCal Striper. Look at that. Super sweet. Go, boys. Nice. Nice, nice, nice striper. All right, guys, there it is. Striper. Beautiful one on the little troll. All right, guys. So right. Oh my God, Jim, huge ones right under us. So basically, guys, right now as we're showing at nighttime, these are some good sized striper right here, just chilling, cruising in the school. So we're in Huntington Harbor right now, and this is found by docks. We're by docks by a drop off to the main channel of Huntington Harbor, and you can see this. Um, there's just striper cruising through, and they're biting. It's not mullet, as you guys see. That's a good fish. Jim, that's a big one? Yeah, I haven't seen him yet. See him right there? Uh-uh. All I can see is your bait. <laughs> oh, I saw a flash. Oh, yeah. Oh, net this one. Oh, yeah, net this one. <laughs> you want to hold? Swing his head towards you. Swing, swing, swing. Oh, <laughs> what the hell? There we go, boys. There's a good one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Solid Southern California Striper, HB Harbor, freaking Jumbo. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, that is a good one. Yeah, I was going to wait on him. How's it going you guys? Today I'm going to be breaking down tackle sector of everything right now for the striper fishing, the recommendations, what to use and what kind of situations. So first let's break down the reels. We're throwing artificials, we're throwing jerk baits. I recommend like Alexa 300 or any like Trank 300, any 300 size reel because I believe they have the power to handle the big ones. I mean, but when it comes to 30 pounder, you're going to be in for a fight because those striper do exist guys. Alexa 300 is great for that. And what I'll be throwing off my Lexa 300 setup, I'll be throwing jerk baits with it. Like here's a Lucky Craft. These work great, but they will attract the smaller the bait, the more of a schooly sized fish you will get. You won't really get the big ones with the smaller baits. Minnows, I've really grown to like this um, this purple kind of anchovy color because they do like anchovies and it works great. So SP minnows are a big uh, bonus. The bigger, the better for that. And the striper love them. So those are some artificial baits. I like to throw for them and also the Sakamata Shad, as you guys will see, as you guys saw in the video, the swim on that thing is perfect. It's a great striper bait. Please use it, guys. It will get you the fish. It will probably work better than the SP minnow. 
just because of how realistic it looks. But those are some big go-to baits for artificials that I would use and you guys should use as well. So right here, I got uh, my Daiwa Saltist 30H. I would use actually a size smaller than this if I had it on me. Torium 14, something like that. A smaller reel, but if you hooked into a big one, this would handle it well. Premier rod, it's rated, it's rated at like 15 to 40 pounds. Graphite composite rod, I love this thing. Caught yellowtail on it, caught tuna on it, caught everything on it, and it would work great if you hooked into a big striper. Yeah, it's a pretty sweet setup, and I recommend this, but even a smaller reel would work. I mean, I didn't have this setup on me, sadly, but you know, the setup we had worked. All right, and when it comes to line, you know, you can use anywhere from 50 pound braid to 30 pound braid, but when it comes to leader in the daytime, I'm using 20 to 25 pound gold label. The thinner diameter will help you. In the daytime, they do have good eyesight and they will not swing on bait unless they know it's realistic. And when you're hooking these sardines, you want to hook them for the butt. Size two to three J hook, preferably go bigger. Go big, but not too big where it's obvious, if you know what I mean, because these fish, they can see the hook, but also it's hard to get a small hook in their mouth because they suck it in, they'll spit it out, suck it in, spit it out. They really have to get it and you also do not want them to you know inhale the hook so size 3 j hook should be good for that and also another bait i do recommend throwing if you're throwing like a bigger setup good old service iron because they do like the bait to be moving erratic that's why we hook them through their butt so the bait just swims fast and away from the boat because in these areas in the harbor where they are you your bait if you hook it through the nose is kind of just going to sit there not really a lot of current what the striper like to do is like they like to get the bait all in a corner so you find like a corner of like, for example, the corners of Huntington Harbor is where we were fishing. So you find a corner in Huntington Harbor, right? The striper are gonna, where a lot of bait gets pushed up in, the striper will be there. They love that. They like easy bait, easy pickings, they'll be eating it. And especially if you find like small anchovies in an area, there'll be striper there. And as you guys saw on the meter marks, which I'll show right now, they hang out on the drop offs, but they'll also be on the ledge on a high tide. But these fish basically are just waiting for the ambush prey. And this is what they look like. These meter marks are exactly what they look like. So pay attention to these. But yeah, guys, so when it comes to fishing the harbor, as I went over earlier, I said fish like drop off areas and fish corners where you know bait gets pushed up. If you know a lot of bait gets pushed there, there's an odd that striper will be there. But another thing about these fish, higher solar lunar activity is gonna be better. I know some people don't believe in that, whatever, but from my experience, the more water movement, the more active the fish are is when the striper are going to appear. But some days they might just not be there. They're an interesting fish because you think you have them figured out, but then one day they don't show up and you have no reasoning to why they didn't show up, but that's just how they roll. So when you're doing this, you gotta go on open minded guys. There are going to be days you failed. We actually had a day two to this video and we went back there, same conditions, same everything, actually a little bit less solar lunar activity, but basically like the same tide, same everything. Pull back there, nothing, no striper. We might have marked one, but that was it. So it all depends on if they're there or not. So don't get discouraged if you go out there and you go, ah, oh, they weren't here today. You know, they don't need to do this. They do exist. They're in all of the harbors. You just gotta put two and two together and eventually you will connect. And when it comes to, if you wanna catch your first one, if you wanna know if they're there, use live bait, live sardines. They're not picky. You know, they'll eat the mackerel too but fly line those out. And if they're there, they will come and eat it for you and you'll catch them. And it works a lot better than bait because sometimes they only, it works a lot better than artificials because sometimes they'll only want, you know, the live bait one day, but that's how you're going to find them. That's how you're going to be able to start getting the artificial bites to go more and more. You just got to find them first. And some days they'll be right in front of you and you'll be throwing every artificial you have at them and they won't swing at it. But if you have a live sardine, they would evade it. Keep your eyes out, look for blow ups. They'll be blowing up on the surface and stuff. So that is a key when finding striper. Yeah, and also, just to throw us in, there's some interesting facts we found out about these striper is one of them being that if you see a striper with broken stripes all over them, those are like farm-raised ones. Those are ones that are put in later on. But if you see it, if you catch a striper, which is, most of them will have the broken stripes because they're all kind of farm-raised stockfish. Um, but if you find one of straight lines, that's the original breed of like purebred striper from um, New Jersey that were brought here like way back when, I think it was like the 1800s, 19, early 1900s when they brought the striper over in stock San Francisco. Those are the original ones, and they made their way all the way down here. I thought that was pretty cool to share with you guys. And also, another PSA, please do not keep these fish if you do find them and catch them. Their population isn't massive. I warn you guys, if you probably do keep them, you know, if you go, hey, I'm going to keep a couple, you might wipe them out in that spot, and you might never see them again. So that's one of the warnings. I mean, sometimes I wonder what the population is, because sometimes we marked a lot, but sometimes we mark a few, and it's just, it's very hard to tell. But yeah, just... 
please don't keep these fish and use this video as kind of like a guide on what to do, what not to do. And also another good way if you want to see if they're in the area that we found out works good, slow trolling live deans, right? You have them on the slow troll, very slow. Um, it's pretty much as slow as you can go. And um, the striper will come and smoke them on the slow troll. So if you're going through an area, you go, hey, there's a striper here. You know, you get a weird mark on the fish finder. You're like, what was that? That's pretty big. Oh, who knows? School fish look pretty big. Could have been mullet. Slow troll a little live sardine by it. And if it's striper, they will come up and eat it, especially if they're hungry. And on days, like I said, of high solar lunar activity, they are hungry and they, they were feeding on any tide swing, the slack tide. So if they're there, they'll eat. So overall, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope this gives you guys a guide to cast striper in Southern California. Guys, they're all the way from Marina del Rey to San Diego. They're in Southern California. Just please respect the fish, find these fish, figure them out. You know, before you know it, this could be a really cool fishery for everyone to partake in, but you know, I can't, you know, it's hard for one person to do all the research because, you know, I don't live down in like Oceanside, for example. I'm not down there often, but there are striper there. But it's, you know, if you guys figure it out, that's cool. But yeah, it's a really cool fishery we have out in Southern California that's going under the radar. But I mean, as you guys see, you could do it fly lining for them and everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Hog Squad. If you have any questions, always comment below. And if you're new here, don't forget to like and subscribe on Hogs Watch Fishing. I fish the West Coast. I fish the East Coast, Florida, anything. Um, yeah, and I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys on the water. Peace.